Uh, <laughs> uh, our next talk uh, is by uh, Miran Kim. Uh, Miran obtained her PhD from the Seoul National University uh, and then did a postdoctorate at uh, UCSD. Uh, and she's now a professor at the UT Houston with the Health Science Center. Uh, and she's going to tell us about the IDASH competition and uh, applications of homomorphic encryption. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the introduction. Um, it's a great honor to give a talk about how to yeah, the, introduce the recent progress of homomorphic encryption for protecting genomic privacy. This project is supported by National Institute of Health, and this is joint work with Xiao Jiang, Ari Farmach at UT Health, and Hai Shu Tang and Xiao Feng Wang at Indiana University, and Lucila Ono Machado and Tong Ting Kuo at UCSD. You know, the cost of full genome sequencing dropped so fast. On 2000, it cost $3 billion and it fell to $1,000 on 2014. And this allows researchers to access to large genomic data sets. And data sharing is of great importance, importance to data analysis to speed up discovery and promote research. Actually, on 2014, NIH, genomic, NIH issued a genomic data sharing policy that allows the use of human genomic data for research and the use of cloud computing service for storage and analysis. But, you know, genomic data are very sensitive and it contains a large amount of personal information Actually, on 2015, the former President Barack Obama spoke about the Precision Medicine Initiative and, and he encouraged biomedical data sharing. And he also mentioned about that, we are going to make sure about the patient privacy. And unsurprisingly, there are several re-identification attacks. For example, Lynn Itero, they showed larger than 55 SNPs can identify a single person. So there may be a genetic discrimination due to the identifiable information and people are more worried about that. Maybe the sensitive information might be disclosure due to inappropriate use of their data. So it's a great fear of unknown. And recently, there are some regulations from several countries, and HIPAA is one of them, which is for health information regulation law for United States. And it recommends to remove the identifiers in the database, such as name, zip code, and etc. And in the case of Europe, EU recently made some data privacy laws, and it goes for anyone or any company in EU member state. And it claims several rights, such as the rights to be informed, the rights to be richer, and so on. And the most important thing is that it, this privacy protection law recommends a kind of technical privacy protection. So it is getting more challenged to ensure how to provide, how to ensure the security and privacy of the data. Actually, you know, there are several privacy technologies for secure computation, for example, multi-party computation, GK, or and differential privacy. And among them, um, among the various H, among them, HE is, H can be considered as one of the promising solutions for the secure computation. And actually our H community have regular standardization meetings to discuss the underlying security and applications and API. And as another community effort, there have been a competition to apply homomorphic encryption to biomedical challenges. And it was sponsored by NIH and several companies such as Baidu, Illumina, and Platon. And since 2014, this competition has been motivated by real world biomedical challenges. 
and many crypto experts and biomedical researchers have participated in this competition. And the participants were asked to develop practical and rigorous solutions for privacy preserving genomic data analysis. And we have demonstrated the feasibilities and applicabilities of secure genomic data analysis using HE and including as well as multi-party computation or different privacy and SGX. And especially in, uh, on 2015, this competition was reported in several media such as Nature News and Genome Web and Doha News in South Korea and Microsoft Research News. Since 2015, the workshop is getting bigger and bigger as seen in this number and more people from around the world are participating in this competition. And every year, the, our organizers receive dozens of submissions from university to industries. Let me briefly introduce the what was the challenge. In 2015, the task was to perform genome analysis, such as comparison of DNA sequence. And there are also MPC track. And on 2016, it was kind of testing genetic disease on encrypted genome data. And since 2017, the task, the challenge were more machine learning based analysis. For example, on 2017, the task was to build a logistic regression model that can predict uh, breast cancer. And 2018, it was to perform genome-wide association studies over encrypted genomes. And last year, the task was to predict missing genome data using trained model. And, 2000, and last year was the peak year for the registration of HT track. Yeah, it was, it was uh, there are uh, four, uh, five, four teams registered for this, for HT track. And in this talk, I will explain how different AT schemes were used and optimized to solve these par this particles problems. The task of 2015 and 15 was to compute Hamming distance and approximate at a distance so we can securely obtain the similarity of two DNA strings. And on each DNA variant, we need to check if two, two alleles are equal or not. So the efficiency was determined by how to express the equality circuit. Actually, at that time, we only have uh, the most powerfully used AG schemes was BZV and BFE and their scheme encrypt integer. So for example, the best solutions for Hamming distance use the Fermat the Fermat theorem using the fact that the massive space is defined as the prime field. And the best solutions for at a distance express the equality and comparison circuit as binary operations. For example, if yeah, let's say P, let's P is the Plantex modulus, then when and when P is prime, then if A and B are the elements of this prime field, C sub P, then the equality circuit is expressed using this power of P minus one. And if P is two, it's very special case of the first, first case, first example. And it can be written more simpler. It's just there's no multiplication if you just compare, just check the equality between one bit. And if you want to compare, uh, check the equality multi, on multi bits, then we may, we compare each bit, we check the equality on each bit and multiply the results together. So the performance was that it takes around eight minutes to compute the edit Hamming distance on 100k sequence, and three, it takes three minutes to compute approximate edit distance 
of 10K sequence. And 2016, the task was kind of applications to secure genetic testing on your VCR file. So given a list up to 100K mutants, the task was to encrypt the whole data set using HE and enable the data owner to carry the data set for the pre presence of the specific genetic mutants. So it's, car it's sort of string match. And the best solution was also was used a similar approach of the bitwise representation like 2015 solution. So it take around one minute to carry one or to perform one carry in 50 VCF files and each file has one 100 K length. And on 2017, the participants were asked you to build a logistic regression model. And the data set consists of the phenotypes for the cancer. So if it has cancer, then it has it, it has plus one, and otherwise it has minus one. And we also have um, genotypes, which represent the existence of the mutant at the specific SNPs. So it's not the real DNA sequence, it's just binary value. So it, it is one if it contains mutant and otherwise it's zero. zero. So it's sort so it's the phenotype and genotype, they are kind of yeah, binary. And the goal is to find a, uh, find a good predictor vector beta, which support the linear relationship between the predictor variable X and the log ode of the event such that the response is one. So if we represent the linear predictor with a probability, then this, the previous equation is equivalent to the following. So the left-hand side of the equation is called logistic, logistic function, and therefore this, this model, that's why this model is called logistic regression. And logistic function look, uh, look like that. So we can simplify this problem by changing it to mi some minimizing problems, such as minimizing the negative log likelihood cost function. And in machine learning base, machine, lear machine learning approach, the gradient descent method is widely used for this kind of optimization, optimization problem. So the idea is very simple. We first start with some initial guess and then keep changing the model parameter to reduce the cost until we hopefully approach a minimum. So the update rule can be written as follows. So it's for at each iteration, we take steps, some steps proportional to the negative of the gradient of the functions at the current point. So gradient descent is kind of first order iterative optimizations algorithm for finding a local minimum. And on the other hand, there is another method to use second order iterative algorithm, which is called Newton method. And as you see, yeah, the second derivative, which is called Hessian matrix, and we need to compute the inverse of the Hessian matrix. So it's not easy, not at all, not easy at all for the evaluation. So the first challenge of so the first challenge of the evaluation of the gradient descent is that the derivative term is computed as the sigmoid value of the inner product between the old model parameter and the input variable x. And you know, in, as in this figure, the sigmoid is an analytic function and HE only support addition and multiplication over encrypted data. So this means that HE can naturally support this evaluation of the sigmoid function. And there are another challenge such that the computation, the, this computation is actually real number arithmetic and 
since the training algorithm are recursive, so the multiplicative depth grows grows linearly with a number of iteration. And in practice, we need a few iterations to get the meaningful results. So first, let us take a look at how to approximate the, the sigmoid to a polynomial. The first one is Taylor series expansion. And this method is widely used for several years, but it's not a good candidate for approximation because it's just global, uh, just local approximation near some point. And in the IDEX competition, there are three different polynomial approximation proposed. And the first one is to use burst and expansion or we can use a, we can find a good global approximation which minimize the mean error of the target function and the estimation, or we can use the infinite norm, infinite error. And as seen in this figure, the approximate, approximated polynomial with a small degree, for example, degree three, degree three or degree seven, or de it's, I, as far as I remember, it was degree three. And the approximate polynomial with very small degree is very close to sigma, the real sigmoid on certain ranges. And here are the results. We actually evaluated six submitted solutions, and I want to briefly introduce uh, introduce four solutions. The first one is proposed submitted by EPFL, and they use BFE scheme and they use Bernstein expansion Bernstein expansion for sigmoid approximation, and they just applied one iteration of gradient descent. And KU Leuven, they also use BFE scheme with Taylor series expansion for sigmoid approximation. And surprisingly, they adopt one iteration of Newton method. And you know, Newton method include matrix inversion. So first they approximate the second derivative term to some diagonal, mat diagonal matrix. And then with this approximation, they only need to compute the inverse of each diagonal element to construct the real inverse of the second derivative. So, and then they approximate the inverse of these multiple numbers by using Newton ref reference approximate method. Anyway, um, anyway, EFL and KU Lubin, they use BFE scheme and BFE scheme, they just support integer in, integer encoding encoding or integer encryption. So they first scale real number to the integer. And after some computation, the message can be very large. So they have to, they should set a large plant space and it results in some downgrade in performance. And Microsoft also used BFE scheme and with minimax approximation. And the key feature of their solution is that they apply the bootstrapping techniques. And this and as in the previous talks, this bootstrapping technique is usually used to reduce the noise after computation. So we can perform arbitrary computation on encrypted data, but they modified bootstrapping in order to merge with a flooring operation in one step. So I think in their protocol, they perform bootstrapping right after each multiplication so that they handle the flooring, they can handle flooring operation as well as bootstrapping and they address the concern about the growth of message and error compared to the EFFL and k level. But at that time, the, the performance of bootstrapping was not so good, I think. Yeah, so as far as I remember, each time, each time, uh, the, each iteration of gradient descent takes around 20 minutes. And, but anyway, it's very meaningful solutions to extend the computation codes linearly with the arbitrary number of iteration. 
And the final solution was proposed, submitted by Seoul National University and UCSD. And yeah, they solution was built on the CKKS scheme. And you know, as in the previous uh, previous talk, yeah, CKKS scheme support the built-in rounding operation very naturally. So they can they could take advantage of take advantage of the rescaling operation and they use they use least square approximation and they could repeat seven iterations of gradient descent and the, the experiment results show that the logistic regression training of our uh, data set with 14k oh, sorry it was 14k 14k samples with 18 features can be finished within 10 minutes And on 2018, the task was to investigate the associations of the genotypes and phenotypes by building the logistic regression model. So it means that on each SNP variant, we predict binary response Y based on the predictor variables of the covariants, including age, weight, and height and the genotype SNP, uh, genotype, genotype S sub F, S sub J, J. So actually we want to learn the beta coefficient of the SNPs, of the corresponding SNPs, and then see how different the, this beta coefficient is from zero. So we, if it is significantly large, then we can say that the SNP at this position has a large effect on the effect on the DGS. But so the nine method is to repeat the logistic regression model training for each individual SNP. And the number of SNPs is 15K. So, but one SNP at a time is too costly. For maybe we can estimate it in the in 2017, it takes around 10 minutes to build one logistic regression model of dimension 16. So maybe it takes around two and a half minutes to build a one model of the dimension four. And we repeat 15K times, and then maybe it takes around 20, more than 20 days. So it's infeasible. So the IDES organizer recommended to use very HE-friendly -friendly logistic regression model, which is called semi-parallel logistic regression. And the main idea is that we can assume that the, the parameters or covariance will stay nearly the same for all SNPs. So we can divide two steps. The first step is just pre-train the model on covariant X. And you know, this covariant has very small dimension, just three dimensions, just the number of column is three. And, and we can just compute the uh, build a bit model just one time. And after that, after after that, using the trained model as a starting point we can find the model parameters of each individual SNPs more accurately, but maybe in parallel. So we need, um, we need, so it was recommended to use the Newton method for the second steps for, in order to obtain the more accurate parameters. And let's remind the, how Newton method was looked like. And it has the, it has the matrix inversion and it was not easy to it, it was not easy to be to be evaluated so let us take a look at how its solutions address this problem yeah here is the first here's the problem and first i want to say yeah, surprisingly all the teams use the kks scheme or its combination with tfh scheme and I think this is because we need real number computation over encrypted data. And, and as far as we know, the CKK is the best solutions for the real number approximation of real number computation. And so the first step of the, yeah, for the first step is just 
build a logistic regression model for covariant X. And the first step is very similar to the last year 2017 IDS task. So these steps between the submitted solutions are very similar. They, they adapted the previous winning solutions of 2017. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, the main challenging part is how to compute the matrix inverse. So duality, duality company and Seoul National University and UCSD, they compute matrix inversion from the computation of the aggregate and determinant. So the main advantage of this representation is that they are expressed as closed form, just consists of addition and multiplication. So it can be calculated in an efficient way. And TFH team efficiently evaluated the sigma mode evaluation inside the gate bootstrapping as Ilaria's talk. And, and as far as I remember, they converted TFH scheme into CKKS scheme ciphertax when the homomorphic evaluation of multiple messages is needed. And duality team and UCSD, they used the RNS variant of CKKS scheme. So they showed good performance than others in terms of the timing and the accuracy. And on 2019, the task was to perform the secure imputation on encrypted genomic data using a trained planned, trained planned model. And genomic imputation is kind of very basic task in GWAS, which leverages the correlation between the genotypes of the existing variants to estimate the genotypes of missing variant. And then and this participant were provided were given four, diff, four different types of genome data. And in the training phase, they they were asked to build a model that can predict a target genotype using the tag genotypes. And for each SNF variant, maybe they can select the closest D number of D predictors in the tag data set as the training data as training data. And in the testing phase, if after they train the model and in the testing in the testing phase they encrypt this the whole tag data and then predict the genotypes using the trained model with this encrypted tag genotypes and so make sure that the the, mo the data the whole data is encrypted but the model is just given as plant plant and we perform the evaluation over encrypted data. And the tag data was kind of yeah 250 samples with 9500 SNPs and the tag the target SNPs is has the same number of samples but smaller SNP variant. And each team used different imputation model. For example, some team, yeah, t um, A star and FFL and TFH team, they adapt the, the logistic regression model. So they train the logistic, they train the model using the logistic regression model. Or some team use convolution neural network, kind of more complex model. And Seoul National University, they use uh, one hidden layer neural network model. And each team optimized their plane model while considering various number of the closest predictor. For example, some team consider 100 closest predictor and some team use just 32 closest predictor. And this competition, this competition is pretty easier than the last two years, but the fast the fast solutions, it was by the yeah, TFH team and it takes, a, takes only less than four minutes for the whole, the whole secure imputation. And I think it's really showed the applicability and scalability of the HE. 
And in the few years, the significant progress of the um, of HE have been made toward the security and improving the efficiency. And I hope that maybe we will push the frontier and facility this continued advance in the secure solutions. Thank you for the attention. Any questions uh, for me? So, so I have a question, um, maybe a little higher level question. During the course of all of these competitions, is there like a picture of specific type of computations or maybe specific application domains where homomorphic encryption seems more useful than others? Uh, you mean compared to the other cryptographic? I mean, yeah. just, you know, play, places where uh, you'd expect to see actual uh, maybe commercial or, or at least uh, or public sector use of homomorphic encryption uh, used for things other than competitions and science fairs and things like that, but actually to uh, for things that people want to do in their daily lives or, in, or institutions want to do. Is there, is there any kind of picture that emerges out of the, these competitions? Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't yeah, have any, yeah, this big picture, but um, and I, so in particular, I mean, are there like public policy or public health bodies that seriously consider using any of these techniques from the IDASH competition uh, in their normal operations? Are there projects going to that direction? Um, I think it, they just start, yeah, they just starting, they just starting to have some interest in secure technology, so not I think not ready for the maybe the real application, real applications of these techniques. But I think the more and more people maybe, get, for example, NIH, yeah, they have some more their their startup project of how to apply the HE or how to apply MBC to the biomedical challenges. So maybe I th I hope that maybe after 10, 10 years. Maybe there's some more like a regulation slow. Maybe we can we have to use to we use any privacy techniques for in order to pro provide a secure data analysis. But not ready. But maybe yeah, maybe within in the future. Thank you. Any more questions? So in that case, let's uh, thank Miran again, and we will meet in, I think, 10 more minutes for the last so, so Sorry, Shai, I think there are some oh, questions sorry. that are coming in through Q&A. Oh, right, sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah. I missed it, yeah. Mm, yeah, the first question is the source code for the IDA submissions made publicable available somewhere didn't find on the IDES website thanks mm, I think it depends on the its teams for example our team provided the paper with the public available source code so it maybe you can find some you can find it in the yeah in the you can find it in Google. <laughs> and a second question is that how does the IDES data set size compare to the real world genomic data sizes? Mm, it depends on the task, um, but in my experience, it's really difficult to get the real data. So, but anytime, but, our yeah, our organizer tried to find the real real world, yeah, real the data, real data, and 
but some some people say it's not the real data it's not the big size compared to the real data set but i think it's it's enough to show the scalability of the, yeah the visibility of hg and the third question is will IDES take place in this year will there be a hg task mm, yeah sure yeah, we we are preparing HG track and maybe we can yeah post yeah post on maybe next month or yeah. Actually there is because this is because of the COVID-19. So yeah, maybe yeah, you can see you can you can check it maybe next next month. And the last question is that other than computation time and memory, is energy cost also considered as a metric? Mm, not so much. Yeah, in the evaluation, we just we just evaluated the computation timing, including encryption and evaluation and decryption, kind of the end-to-end -end performance. And we evaluated uh, we are uses memory or, and sometimes we just, um, we just, uh, we also evaluate the accuracy of the model. For example, the this regression model or yeah, but not energy cost. And the other question is that, do you accept any kind of solutions like MPC and differential privacy or do you, or, oh, or you focus on the FAT mostly Oh yeah, it's it's good question. Um, in this talk, I just address, I just introduce uh, HE track, but but as in the previous, as in the a few first slide, I all there is also some track about MPC and differential privacy and SGX, so you can find it. And the last question is that. Would it would it be possible to give access to previous year data set? Mm, sure. Um, I think yeah, we, you have to ask to the IDES organizer. And I think it might be publicable available if you yeah. You should ask to IDES organizer, yeah, including me. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll just ask one more question, Amir, related to that. Uh, I think it would maybe partially the question is about uh, pu uh, publishing the results, at least the current capabilities of homomorphic encryption with respect to a given problem. I mean, uh, maybe removing information about you know well, the winning teams, but more what are the current capabilities of homomorphic encryption and having those results publicly available might be beneficial just to, when we, especially when we talk about applications of FHE, what are their current capabilities? Maybe from that perspective, sharing some of that information uh, publicly might be useful. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for the, yeah, it, advice, yeah, good comment, yeah. Okay, thank you. We, we will reconvene in uh, five minutes. <laughs>